fans of wargaming, resin accessories, and interesting surprises in the post. Thank you very much for joining me for a sample review. Gosh, it's been a while since I've done one of these of some, I don't know what's in the box, but some samples that have been very kindly sent to me by those nice people over in Poland. That's right, it's Spellcro Miniatures. Yeah, look at this. Not one, but two boxes of um, goodies to look at. So yeah. That's really kind of Spellcrow to send these over for me to review and share with you guys and girls. So yeah, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to open up this packet and we're going to take a look at what they've sent. Um, we're going to see what the quality is like, see what the utility is like. Think about how we could use these um, accessories and these resin accessories in our wargaming. So yeah, that is the plan. So as I say, this was sent to me as a sample by Spellcrow. They've not paid me anything, but they have sent me free stuff. Um, that said, I will give this a fair appraisal. So if it's good, I will say so. But if there are faults and flaws, I will not hesitate to point those out. So that is a plan. And before I go any further, people at Spellcrow, thanks for sending this. I'm sorry it's taken me an awful long time to do this review, but I do very much appreciate it. Right, well, as is customary for these reviews, um, I have actually done a little bit of openage already. And to avoid previous repeats of hilarious attempts and fails to get inside the boxes, we have the knife of opening. Uh, well, that one's already been handily done, so let's do this. I have no recollection of opening this. Um, I might have opened one just to take a peek, but I can't remember. It was so long since it came. I do feel bad about that. Sorry, Spellcrow. So, which side do we open first? Eeny, meeny, miny, me Well, I'm left-handed, so we're going with the left one. There, that decided it. Now, we've done, uh, we have done a few um, sample reviews from Spellcrow in the past on this channel. We've done everything from Space Marine compatible accessories to their tiny little um, micro fancy game, which is rather neat. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got that. So firstly, well, we've got some bubble wrap. Um, just testing this. This feels it's nice and clean. Um, let's do the pop test. Yeah, that passed. So yeah, I think this is good quality bubble wrap. Sorry, I do apologize for that. Right, been terribly flippant. Right, it looks like we have, right, lots of cool terrain here. We've got to start with this one because I just love its name. So this is an outhouse, a toilet outhouse, and it's called the Old Privy. So that's a very English name to use, or British name. So yeah, the Old Privy. So this is new. Ah, right. I was thinking we'll have to cut this open, but um, but no. They are in sealable bags, so these bags can be reused. Tight fit this one. So, let's take a look. Well, it is an old privy, as it says. It's a 28 millimeter scale. Yeah, that's rather neat, though, isn't it? Lots of nice, uh, lots of nice wood texture on this. We've got the, um, the hinges as well, the door handle, and a typically shoddy lean-to roof, as a, or well, inclined roof to keep the rain off, as a, I guess was the, um, was the norm with old privies. Yeah, it's nice, lovely. Fantasy-esque, but you know, fantasy terrain can often be used in sci-fi settings as well, where you're having the medieval uh, tech planets. Um, yeah, well, that, um, that's really nice. Nice dry casting as well. So, the old privy. Let's now move on to the second thing in the box, which is this, a, ooh, <clears throat> a Tathia cyst fungus. Well, it sounds like this is a something of a shroomery. So let's, uh, let's, let's go and uh, have a look at the fungus. I, know, I don't particularly like mushrooms to eat, but strangely, I do quite like cooking them. Um, I, I do like the texture of mushrooms. So if I ever have anyone who likes mushrooms, I quite like to cook them a mushroom omelette, for example, but never eat them. Uh, the flavor doesn't really agree with me. 
most of the time. So we've got four components in this set. Um, the first of which is this base. So it's all like, well, it looks quite fungusoidal, if that's even a word. I guess, um, yeah, this is rather neat. If you've ever been into an old wood where there is a, a well-developed population of fungi, you might see growths and um, things growing like this. Yeah, that's, uh, that's rather pleasing. Nicely cast again, very clean, very dry. And then we've got, um, we have three, I suppose these are the cyst funguses, aren't they? Um, according to the name. Let me see if we can move that. So let's start, let's start with the smallest first, bless it. Yeah, that's good, lovely. Now are these, I, I really haven't seen these models before. I'm not joking when I say I haven't seen these before. So I'm unsure as to whether or not these are supposed to assemble like that. I think, right, this is what I think happens. We take the said base and that goes there and then baby cyst fungus is gonna go there like that. The next one we have, um, uh, well, a tall upright cyst fungus. Funguses are also, um, despite being very fragile um, to handle, they, in terms of their mechanical lifting strength when they grow, it is remarkable. And there've been many documented cases of paving slabs being lifted by growing um, funguses or fungi, should I say. Yeah, good. I mean, it looks apart, doesn't it? Imagine these are almost like little puff balls. Um, again, nicely cast, nice and dry, feels good. Now, will I be able to balance this one? I'm not sure if I can. Oh, there we go. What are the chances of that getting knocked over over the course of this review? Pretty darn high. And then we've got the squat, mm, chunky one. That's nice. Yeah, same thing again. Beautiful cast, uh, not, nice dry casting, loads of detail. And I'm struggling to see sign of any sort of mold line. I guess these have been sort of cast that way and the mold's been peeled back. So there's probably no mold seam uh, in the actual body of the um, fungus. And then that I think sits there. So actually I should really see if we can turn this around. Oh, look at that, the sheer skills that can go there. So we have an old privy and the Tathia cyst fungus. Sticking with the mycelia, we then have a Tathia cactus. Oh, so not mycelia at all, but uh, moving on to the spiky plants. If anyone can remember the Latin for the cacti group or group of group of plants cacti all belong to, please do feel free to share that in the comments for a part. Uh, I do like a little bit of um, cladistics and uh, nomenclature, although cladistics is different, that's evolutionary. Right, so, sorry, going off on a waffle. Ooh, is it the mark of Nurgle? No, must be a coincidence. Or is it the mark of Nurgle? I'm sure it's a coincidence. But is it the mark of Nurgle? Who knows? Oh, is that the mark of Nurgle? I think there's something going on here with this uh, so-called cactus. Yeah, lovely cast, so much detail. These are gonna look great painted. Maybe I should give these away. I like these. Um, I've got a modeling project um, my daughter is interested in doing and yeah, this fits with it perfectly. Basically death world flora and fauna. And these, yeah, she's, I think these are actually brilliant for it. So yeah, brilliant. Nice one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you Spellcrow on a personal level for that one. Right, here we have the, the boloid of the cactus. I just invented that. So it is a largely spheroid cactus blob. And then it has these lethal looking Spines, Ooh, little product placement there, Spellcrow. This video was sponsored by Spellcrow. It wasn't sponsored by Spellcrow at all, I'm joking. They provided some samples for free. Right, so you're gonna take those off and you're gonna attach these into these um, 
recesses. And then the whole uh, spiky thing will then sit on that. So if I put this like so, I think we can get some sort of feel from it. Right, moving on, there are two more to go in this. Uh, we're gonna do this uh, in this half of the box, the lefty side, the sinistral side, for the medievally superstitious amongst you. Obviously being the team left hand, it was clearly nonsense. And I got these out without saying what it was. I do apologize. These are large necrolith crystals. There we go. And we have one, uh, we have two, and we have three. Necrolith crystals. So I guess um, we have large hexagonal upward fracture weathered crystals. Hmm. The mineralogist inside of me does appreciate these. Um, obviously, they are strictly scientifically accurate, but um, I have seen real world examples of a crystal growths, crystal outcrops, or growth really deposits, uh, which are not entirely dissimilar to this. And of course, when you're talking about gaming terrain for fantasy and sci-fi, you always want it to be a bit bigger and bolder than real life. And uh, I do like, you can imagine perhaps these are due to freeze thaw weathering action, how um, the surface of the crystal has become fractured along lines of weakness and it's beginning to granulate um, and weather away where those fractures conjugate. Very good. So, yeah, necrolith crystals. Um, let's see if we can uh, stand there somewhere. I think the large necrolith crystal is going to be a bit of a... It looks like he's a bit of trouble, actually, and he doesn't want to stand up. So, there you go. Nice. Okay, from Lefty Box, we have one final item. Uh, keep the box out of view. Hope the light's okay. It does look all right. The sun is a bit low in the sky now, so um, but I think it's, uh, it seems pretty decent. Right, the final one is a <laughs> luxury privy. Uh, so when you moved up from your um, lean-to privy, and your basic privy, and then go for a luxury privy. Reminds me of when I was canoeing on the Ord River in Australia. They had a, probably less of a luxurious and more of a, this sort of a privy, 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 privy at the overnight stock camps for one to do their business at. Memories, eh? Right, so a luxurious privy comes as follows. Uh, Four-sided uh, with a double sloped roof, like that. Um, more sturdy construction, proper latch. Uh, so anti vera isn't gonna walk in on you as you are communing with nature. So yeah, I think this is an altogether better way to do your business, right? Quality-wise. Again, loads of detail, and this is going to look really good. It's nice and solid, and I just, uh, the casts look absolutely spot on. Very nice. And we'll put the luxurious privy there. There's a bit more going on here. What do we have with these two big dongus things here? I think these are some sort of casting gates, so I believe they need cutting away. I suppose then it's probably supposed to go that way. Yeah, so you've got the casting gates to the back. One thing you are going to do is when you cut those off, you're not going to have the nice wood texture on where you've removed those, which is a bit of a shame. There's two things you could do, or you could just leave it smooth, or you could probably rescore some texture in there with a knife if you're careful and um, if you're confident in doing that. So yeah, luxury privy. I do like that. So, so far we're doing crystals, toilets, and uh, and various forms of exotic plants and fungus. What a fascinating review. So, moving on to the second half of the mystery box, the righty side. Well, there's no more space in camera shots, so I'm going to have to do that off camera, so sorry about that. Maybe if we just do it here, there we go. This is very unprofessional, terribly filmed. 
dreadful conception on my part as to how to lay things out. Ah, we have some more terrain. Awesome. Right, so have one, two, three, four. Well, let's start with these larger bits. And this first item is Barricades version one. Yeah, now I actually think, I believe we've seen Barricades version one on a previous video. I think Spellcrow kindly sent me these last time, so, um, you, so I'm not sure if they sent these to me a second time now, or if they've just been really generous. Let's go with the latter. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's look at it from a generosity point of view. Yeah, so here we've got some of the sci-fi elements in this piece. So we've got like an engine, we've got these fuel canisters that are available as a loose set as well. I remember getting some of those, they're nice. Um, a munition box, a laser rifle. Laser rifle, don't forget, it's not a las gun. A helmet of an armored exo knight, perhaps space knight. This looks like it is the uh, access door of a rhinoceros troop transporter. Maybe you could call it that, and another one as well, which has been turned into a barricade. So yeah, loads of detail, absolutely packed with detail. All sorts of different textures going on as well, ranging from smooth armor plate, mesh grilling. Uh, tubs which may well be plastic, wood, rope, and then you've got the actual dirty grubby bits as well. So yeah, that's really good. Great bit of small terrain as well. And you could use those in, say, heresy as barricades if you're buying an Aegis defense line. It doesn't have to look super swishy. And then we have uh, the second element of this uh, set, which has got a um, quite a sophisticated looking storage unit. So that is probably where the Praetor's packed lunch is kept, I would have imagined. Um, we have a some sort of sensor apparatus, a couple of cylinders, a, a, a clip of ammunition, and a, and a wooden storage box. Oh, yeah, warning sign. Do not. Oh, yes, that's. I believe that's a radiological hazard badge there. So yeah, always good to make your cover out of radiation waste storage containers. That's that always ends well. So yeah, brilliant. Whichever guardsman was put in charge of that, I think they're probably going to the commissar for a bit of a lecture. Right, very nice. Uh, let's do the next of these, which is this set here, which are stone fences. So I, I guess this may be a bit of a language thing, of course, in the uh, in the United of the Kingdoms, we would imagine these are stone walls, but they serve a similar purpose to a fence in that they are for marking land boundaries. So I have two of these, two of these in this set. So the first one, again, really good linear barricade features for games. A bit of gunge there. Let me get the knife of investigation, or the scalpel of investigation. Okay, that's a little bit of a mould now. Let's, um, let's just go in and root that out. So a little bit of a mold breakage has occurred when this one's been made. I'm not sure if it's a loss of detail, if that's an actual gap and, and actually what's happened there is just it's just a mold that's um, got stuck into that narrow gap. As you can see there's a, an equipped size gap here. I suspect yeah I think that will probably clean out and that is actually supposed to be a gap. So there's no actual, there you go, a big lump of it. So the only thing that's lost out there is Paul Spellcrow with one of their molds dying. Uh, the actual cast is perfect. Yeah, it's quite a narrow thing, so you might imagine I fill that in a little bit, but I don't know, it's a lovely detail. Talking of lovely details, um, yeah. Again, loads of texture to this. Some nice, ooh, swishy wavy bits from the uh, resin. That's almost a, that's almost art in itself, isn't it? Yeah, good detail. And a really nice piece of practical linear um, gaming terrain as well. Do like that. And then the second element of the stone fences set. So yeah, that's, well, this time you've got a barrel that's been broken into the breach or been left in the breach. 
Uh, no exciting wavy pattern on this one. But still a nice piece of terrain nonetheless. Very good. Yeah, it's starting to run out of space, but so I'm going to start making walls. Uh, maybe we'll uh, actually make that wall to keep uh, preserve a sense of symmetry. We'll put the proters sandwiches at this end of the wall. Right, so we have two more boxes to open. And okay, one of these skull doors for light vehicles. So I suppose this is like some of the Space Knights accessories. Um, this says um, Umbra Tourist, that's a fantasy world game. Um, so I think this is just general packaging, as you can see with the Spellcrow logo. Um, made in Poland, there you go. But these are for sci fi vehicles. So we'll play a game of guess which vehicle it could be used on in a moment. Very well packaged. I mean, the quality of the packaging on these is excellent. Really, really good. And you would uh, certainly, uh, these are always going to arrive in excellent condition. Uh, they're not going to get damaged. So, goodness me, look at this. Whoa. What are they called again? Is it skull doors? Skull doors for light vehicles. So, if you had a rhinoceros armored troop transporter, um, these would fit that very well. Uh, as they would, you know, maybe certain ginormous sized tanks of the Space Knights Legionnaires Force. Yeah, I could imagine them going on there as well. And if you were, say, playing the Plague Knights, then um, I think these are certainly very in keeping with their style. Or the um, Knights of Iron as well. Imagine they, um, the Warrior Knights of Iron, these could suit their vehicles rather nice as well. Yeah. Even got a little control thingy. I wonder if your eyes light up when you press that to enter. Probably will. You know, why not spook the crew out? And last but not least, oh my lord, it is the skull. To be more pre anatomically precise, it is actually a cranium. Um, the skull, if I remember rightly, is uh, all of. Uh, all the head bones. So this in uh, in mammals, uh, well, humans specifically. Let's stick to humans. Well, this generally holds true to mammals, I believe, and uh, certainly modern mammals. Um, this is a cranium, and then you'd also have the jawbone, which is known as a mandible. There are then the um, ilium stapes, and I just forget a third bone of the inner ear. Um, which also make up part of the unique bone package that forms a mammal's skull. But this, um, yes, this is technically the cranium. It's a, quite a formidable looking cranium. Nice uh, suture lines as well. Anatomically correct there. Whoops, come back focus. Obviously the focus got scared of the skull just then. It's like, how dare you defocus on me? I shall haunt your dreams. Splendid. Um, kudos points in the comments for whoever can come up with the best idea for this giant skull. I mean, there are so many different ways you could use it. You could even fit this, I bet, to certain large armoured futuristic space walker cockpits. I bet that would fit quite well. Yeah. I could see that, but yeah. Please do share your thoughts in the comments on how you could use this cranium. And with that somewhat anatomically influenced description of the final product in this sample, that brings me to the end of this. I had no idea what was in here, so this is all a surprise to me. You know, really interesting stuff. You've got a mixture of uh, practical gaming terrain, interesting features, you know, fascinating non-typical plant life and uh, and you know on top of that once you've fought through it being scared by the monsters you can then go to a toilet and even the luxury toilet if you're fortunate enough yeah really interesting products you know similar to ones i've had before from spellcrow these are really good casting quality absolutely excellent flawless as far as i'm concerned most of these are essentially they're ready to wash and paint and game with there's just a little bit of construction work to do here and here, and a little bit of tab removal and assembly to do there. So brilliant, straight out of the pack, ready to use. I think that 
finishes everything I've got to say about these samples. I'd just like to say thank you very much again to Spellcrow for sending these to me for review. I will leave a link to their website in the description. So, you know, it'll be down here. Please do check them out. Um, they have a huge range of resin gaming accessories and conversion parts. And yeah, well, you know from reviews I've done in the past, I think they make some really good gear. Yeah, please do check them out. And thank you again to Spellcrow. To you guys and girls, thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you found it interesting and insightful. As always, please do share your comments and observations in the comment section, I suppose. And if you've bought anything from Spellcrow, you know, if you'd like to share your experiences as to what you thought of the products and customer service, yeah, please do share those there. That'll be good to hear. And as always, interested to see. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time. And goodbye.